<laughs> hi, uh, it's, hi, I'm Chris Lloyd and welcome to Clever Little Cheese Sessions. Um, this is episode five, which is fantastic. And today we are going to be looking at all things butter. Butter makes everything better. I don't know who said that, but I totally believe them. And today I am joined with Mitch Hello. Lloyd, who is nice my son. You. Yes. A lot taller and a lot better looking. Thank you. <laughs> um, but Mitch uh, is our senior cheese maker at Woodside Cheese Rights, um, so um, such a valuable asset to me and uh, our business as well. So let's talk about butter. I, I, one thing that I really want to try and just get across today is how. Um, amazing uh, cultured butter is um, and how superior it is like taste wise um, we're just having a, little, a few little Instagram live issues here so we're trying to see if we can reinstate that I don't think it's no maybe it's not gonna work okay so basically um, when we start when we start looking at things like let's just say margarine and yes I have got a brand here um, I just want to go through with you the ingredients. So, uh, okay, so we've got vegetable oil is 60%, it contains 47% canola oil, we've got water, we've got salt. Ah, we've got emulsifier 471-322 from soy. We've got milk solids, we've got preservative 202. We've got food acid, which is 270. We've got natural color which is 160A, whatever that is. We've got vitamins A and D. That's good. Natural flavor. Vitamins. Super clean. Oh, it does contain vitamins. Okay, great. So I'm, I'm gonna, my point you'll get in a sec. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we've got, um, you know, uh, cream, some thickened cream here. Uh, it's regular uh, and it contains gelatine. It contains stabilizer, 407A and emulsifier 471 okay it's better it's a little better a few less ingredients this is a dairy product okay so when we start looking at cream and uh, uh, cream and and making butter the cream of my choice is tweed vale and they're our neighbors uh, up in the adelaide hills uh, absolutely gorgeous gorgeous family um and have and been Great cream, and they use it in our cheese and to make butter. When yeah. we do make butter, and they've genial. been they've been there for years. Okay, so are you ready for the ingredients? One hundred percent cream in brackets, pasteurized, and that's it. Okay, so I guess my point here is that you know um, with butters and margarines. I mean, margarine. Just why would you? Um, you need to be aware that actually there's a lot of ingredients that are added to these products um, to stabilize them and I just urge you to think about um, how important it is to know what we're putting uh, you know in our in our bodies and, and I think and if, you're, if you're going to there. such effort to make um, something like this then it's not that hard, but if you're going to the effort to make something like this, use the best possible product you can absolutely. start with. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a good example. But there's others that are, that are similar if yeah. you can't get, get Yeah, so exactly. Alexandrina Cheese Company um, also make a beautiful pure cream. So for you to make great butter, you've got to have great cream. For me to make great cheese, I've got to have great milk, all right? So the first thing is choosing your cream. And I'd also say choose something that um, has a long expiry date. As well, so it's you, so you know so it's, it's as fresh. fresh as possible. Absolutely. So yeah. make sure if you're there, look for something that's got a couple of weeks, maybe a, yep. a week to a couple of weeks still on it. Exactly. So anyway, our our choice is uh, perhaps Tweed Vale, and um, it's it's readily available in supermarkets, particularly in Foodlands, um, that, which is where I actually pick this little guy up. So the process to make butter is actually really quite easy, and I think once you learn it you will just go, oh God, you know, why didn't I know this before? Um, and not only will you know exactly what is in your butter, um, but you know, I think it will save you a fair bit of money. All right, so basically what we need to do just to get the process going, we're gonna do cultured butter today. I can empty this 
cream into my uh, food processor and I could just make straight butter, all right? That is absolutely possible. But today, we want to show you how to make culture butter. And the reason that I want to show you how to make that culture butter is because it tastes a lot better, right? It tastes farther, yeah. You oh get a God. lot more acidity and um, it's just got a lot more flavor than, yeah. than a normal butter. Yeah, really? Normal butter, you just whip it to cream, keep going, and eventually you'd end up with butter. Um, but you'll notice with uh, butter that's been, uh, with cream that's been cultured, um, the process happens a lot quicker. So you've already done half the work, you've already thickened it somewhat, so um, the rest of the process happens really quickly. Uh, and it is super delicious. It's way, way superior to just being um, plain butter. But if that's all you wanna do, it still is much better than buying, you know, let's say something like margarine or even some of the butters that add a whole lot of different ingredients that we don't probably wanna be putting in our bodies. All right, so I've got my um, tweed bale. Uh, it is 500 mils, that's all I'm gonna really worry about today to show you. And I'm gonna place that into my jug of uh, boiling water here. And I'm gonna bring that up. Oh, warmish water. Uh, and I'm gonna bring that up to around 18, 19, 20 degrees. All right. And to do that, I've just got my little trusty thermometer. I'm just gonna let that sit in there. And once it comes up to temperature, I'm then going to empty those contents into my bowl. And here we are. Here's one I prepared before. Don't you just love that? Um, huh? Planning. <laughs> just so we keep the ball rolling. Okay, so here is my cream that is 21 degrees. And I'm just going to empty it into my bowl, just like that. Beautiful cream. Fresh as a daisy. Have a sniff, Mitch. Have a taste. And a taste. Always like to taste. And I'm just going to add a teaspoon of starter culture. All right. Now, if you're interested in this starter culture, you can just email me directly, chris at cheeserights.com.au and I can organise for you to have access to this. It does make a difference. Um, I'm just gonna sprinkle that over the top of my cream and I'm gonna stir it through. When you realise how simple this is, you will not look back, I tell you. Okay, so we've got 21 degrees, 20 degrees cream. I'm just stirring through. Okay, and I'm gonna leave that. That's all you have to do. You're just gonna add some starter culture to the cream. And what that's gonna do is it's going to acidify the cream and it brings all those proteins together. And we'll show you, because we have one we prepared before, of course we do. Right, you're going to put that aside leave, overnight. Leave it out of the fridge. Out of the fridge. Try and keep it warm. If you can keep it warm, that's that's good. Um, Especially at the moment, seeing the weather's yeah, cold. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really, really quite chilly. And um, I like to do it overnight. So I might do that, say, after dinner. Just put my heat, heat my cream up. Put the starter culture in. Mm -hmm. Glad wrap over the top. Put it away overnight, and then the following morning, as I said, here's one we prepared before, because we are organised, uh, I get this. All right, so you can see, I don't, I don't want to lose the whole thing, but you can see we had cream, which was very, very liquid, and now, just with the process of acidification, we've been able to just solidify this cream and, and it tastes good. It tastes amazing. Do we do you want to come and say hello at mm -hmm. this point? <laughs> I just poke my head around. Come Old and say faithful. hello. He's back. Dewey's back. Our a wonderful um, photographer, but uh, amazing <laughs> cook and chef and whatever ah. he does. Oh, and we and we've even got Bailey. We've got the whole family. We've got, got the, the whole, whole family, family on. <laughs> but do we? I just want you to sniff that. You can smell the acidity. It's yeah. Us. So yeah. it's got acid, beautiful. Acid. It's got beautiful acidity. Acidity, and so basically, what we've um, created here is what is called creme fraiche. All right. So you can at this point. 
depending on how much um, you know cream you have cultured, you could take a bit off. Yeah. And you could use make, it just like sour cream. Yeah, basically. use it's it like essentially sour the cream. Same thing. You can make Adam Liao's uh, amazing little naan. He makes his naan breads with um, with sour cream or creme fraiche. Uh, which is absolutely stunning. Just just um, check out Adam Liao on Instagram. That's where he puts most of his recipes. I made them the other night and they were... Well, yeah, they were good. You had them. They I were pretty them. good, weren't they? Yes. All yeah. right, so here we are. We've got this lovely solid thing going on. And now we want to take that and we want to turn it into butter. All right, there's going to be a little bit of noise. I'm sure we can handle it, can't we? Yes, nothing we haven't dealt with before. <laughs> All right, so... I am going to use a food processor. You could, if you uh, have got a lot of time on your hands, you could beat it with a... Don't do that. <laughs> with a whisk. <laughs> don't be silly. Uh, if you wanted to. I don't Over, know. I, if, I, if I had the option of a blender or a whisk, I would choose a jar on top of that. So <laughs> you can put it into a jar and you can shake it like a cocktail and it will turn it into butter. Solidify. How long would that take, right? Not that long. No. no. If you want, why don't I do some? <laughs> Just to show you. Uh, or you can use we'll your... We'll race you against the food processor. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Idea. We could do, or you could use your trusty um, little uh, mixer, hand mixer, if you wanted to. So, the, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's many ways that you can actually make butter if you don't have a food processor. Um, and you can also use those stabbing mixer things. I don't really understand what they're about, but anyway. A churn? No, a, a stabber. Oh, the hand yeah, mixer. Hand mixer. Is that, what are they called? Oh, hand mixer. Hand mixer. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to take a lovely little chunk of that um, cultured, cultured cream. That's what we've got at the moment. And I'm going to stick it into my blender here, like so. And I'll leave the rest for Mitch. Just leave me a bit of sour cream, oh, could I'm you? I'm not going to take that much. I don't <laughs> want to work too hard. All right, I'm going to put this on my uh, trusty blender. And now, I don't know, can you, are you seeing me over here, do we? All right, I've just put just that in, in I've just put that in the blender, nothing, you know, but except that I'm going to make a bit of noise now, right? So, uh, can we do that? Can we race Mitch? Yeah, let's race. All right, let's, yeah. wait, let's, know, let's who, wait, let's wait for him. I like maybe it's going to be too thick, but... Pardon? I like maybe it's going to be too thick, but let's see. Oh, well. I did say that. I reckon, I, can do it I reckon you might be better at mixing a cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, you, shall we? All right, we're ready to go? Yeah. All right. Good for child labour. <laughs> if you have kids. <laughs> All right. Keep them busy so, for a while. <laughs> Mitch is just going to keep going, shaking the, shaking the, shaking the jar, the butter jar, which is great. It's yeah. that. It's a good done. one. Oh, there you go. It's done. Yeah. Oh, it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well done. I'm just going to go again a little bit here. It's because yours right? isn't done properly. <laughs> Alright, so... It's hard work. Oh yeah, it's split. Yeah. Yep. The buttermilk and the... yeah. Absolutely. Well done, Mitch. That's great. I'm impressed, actually. Alright, and then over here, same thing. We've actually split, split the cream and we've now got solid cream, which is really butter, and we've just got to work it a little bit, and we've got buttermilk. So you separated the milk solids from the um, from the water component. From, from the water component in the, in the uh, cream. Okay, yeah. so I'm just going to take off my my buttermilk. All right, this is golden. Don't waste an don't waste a drop of it because you can use that in your. Mitch, do you mind just popping that over there? Thank you. 
You can use that in your pancakes or your scones, whatever it is that you want to. Um, great for fried chicken. Oh, and great yeah. for fried chicken. Do you mind just grabbing a cold, in the freezer there's a cold water. A cold water, oh, cold yep. water. Yep. All right, so. You yeah, yeah, have a hot ring monitor, do you, Mitch? <laughs> <laughs> I should have got him to put my watch on. We could have measured his his heart rate. But look, I guess you know the, the proof is there. You can actually make it. Just mind popping that away. Um, you can actually make, you can make it, it without, without electricity. Electricity. All right. It has and been made let's face it. Of years. We've all got time, right? <clears throat> so I just look now after you drink right. it. So yeah. So here we go. We've still got buttermilk coming off. All right. And we've got this lovely solid thing going on over here. And then I'm just going to squeeze a bit before I actually remove. I'm just going to squeeze as much buttermilk as I can just get out. String. Just like so. You can see how easy it is. And the taste will just be amazing. And somebody baked me some bread yesterday. I wonder who that was, do we? <laughs> um, and so when, when we go offline, we will be munching some bread and, and having some of this grand old butter. All right, as you can see, Watch you know, out, there's right. still great amount of buttermilk coming off. Right. So, Just waiting for butter. <laughs> oh yes, the dog is always hanging around waiting for butter, but I don't think it's really gonna get any. All right, so you can see oh, there, no. That's what we've got, and there's our and there's our lovely colour to it. Yeah, lovely and yellow. It's lovely and yellow because it's really good um, milk. Now, where's my other bowls gone? They all seem to have disappeared oh, for some there. reason. Oh, yes, yeah. that'd be great. So, um, if you have any questions, please just um, you know ask at any point. Thank you, Mitch. And um, do you want to squeeze this out? Me me? I had a question come through before. Yeah, what was that question? Um, Yeah, um, so Chris at Cheese Rights. Chris. At cheeserights.com.au. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we can And send. what we will do is we'll send them the recipe. And if they, if, if they go to Chris Lloyd Artisan on, um, online, on, on the web, uh, and join up to uh, the Clever Little Cheese um, Club. Uh, we'll be able to send them all of that information. Otherwise, they can just email me. All right, so That's great. Chris at cheeserights.com.au. Yeah. Perfect. All right, can I just get that over there as well? All right, so basically, I'm going to just get Mitch to come in here. I'm still taking off buttermilk, right? And as I said, you do not want to waste one single drop of buttermilk. Once, once we start washing it, you can no longer yeah, keep exactly. it as buttermilk. It's now diluted. And I made a same. small amount of butter earlier today and I got, look, what's that saying to me? How many meals is that? I got 250 meals of buttermilk. That's going to make roast chicken, it's going to do pancakes, it's going to do scones. So you can see, Mitch, just bring it over here so we, um, we can see. Yep. So um, Mitch is just squeezing now, obviously with you know nice Maybe clean not. hands and all of that sort of stuff. We need another bowl. Doesn't need to be glass, just so I can it? separate it. Yep, sure. Where have I put that other one? It's no. oh, it's all that stuff in it. <laughs> just oh, grab, just grab the normal bowl. It's just so I can dish it out <laughs> and then. All right, so you can see here we're just squeezing out our, uh, our buttermilk. We, we want these sessions to be really relaxed, just by the way. Um, so, Whoop, you know, no, we no just want to try and make sure that, you know, we just keep it informal. Um, but, yeah, just try and teach you something. I guess that's really why I wanted to start the Clever Little Cheese sessions. So Mitch is just squeezing the buttermilk out and it's important to get all the buttermilk out because if you leave the buttermilk in the butter, it will tend to go rancid um, a lot a lot quicker. Well, it will go rancid. 
So it's about squeezing it a couple of times, not just once. And we're talking some really, really firm squeezing. Can you squeeze that one more time or is it all good? No, it's that was good? just to get a bit more buttermilk. Now okay. people wash it. So there's right. two steps to take out the buttermilk. One is to just squeeze the butter and then secondly, uh, to wash it in mm. cold water. Um, and that's just basically a process of like almost kneading the butter yep. in cold water. And All that right. releases more of that. So here we are, here's the buttermilk. Uh, we've squeezed out what we can, and now we're going to what's, do what's called washing the butter. All right, so this is really cold water. I've had this uh, bottle sitting in the frozen, freezer. Okay. It's a little bit frozen, but it's good that it's um, nice and cold. And I'm just gonna pour that over the top of the butter. That's and what, fun. what happens is too, it actually makes the butter easier to handle and it won't stick to your hands at this point. Um, it will come away really quite easily. But again, you want to be able to squeeze out as much of the buttermilk as you can. And, and they, they say that you should do this until, like, so you do it for a little while, then you empty all the water and then refill it. And they say you should do it until the water sort of remains clear. Clear, And so yeah. you can see there that it's still quite white. Um, and so that means that we're, you know, we're still getting buttermilk coming out of the butter yeah. currently. Which just means that it won't last for as long. I mean, you could... Um, I've got a question though. Can you do this step in a mixer? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can? Yeah. yeah. Right. So just we could have just added the dough hook water. Or the, yeah, dough uh, you could you could leave the blender. Yeah, you the, could just oh, blender. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, and just blend and then it add the water. Uh, and then just re and then just pour the water out when it gets cloudy and then yeah. refill it. And then water. refill yeah. it. So I'm presuming the cold water just stops it from melting. Yeah, the cold water just makes it easy to handle. Like yeah. it's hardly sticking to my hands. Yeah. It's quite malleable. And obviously, make sure your hands are super yeah, clean, right. all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. And um, we'll just come back now. So we've got that second wash. And then it's pretty much. All pretty right. Much there. Yeah. I'll just do one more, yeah. So we'll just do one more wash. I think it's good, uh, it is really important to get all the buttermilk um, out. So it is good that people just consider to do two washes. It doesn't take long. You can I mean, see here now how the yeah. water is staying more clear, more transparent. That's so good, it looks like it's yeah. doing quite well. Perfect. All right, so what we are now going, so that's it. Basically, I mean, you, you now yeah, have so uns unsalted, unsalted butter right there, in front of your eyes. Quick, easy. Mm. It's yummy, isn't it? All right, so let's just, yep, that's great. So what I wanna do now is just um, talk to you about salting the butter. So we're going to take off, Mitch, uh, unsalt it over here, please. So we're yeah, just going to do more salted because that's where the, we're going to take off salt. a little bit of butter um, and just keep it as unsalted. That much. So that's my little unsalted um, thing there. So I guess I'm just telling you that because if you're going to make sweets, we're going to make some pastry. It's actually really nice not to obviously have the salt in in the in the butter. Um, and then we've got these um, these other pats over here that we are going to make into our. Um, uh, salted. salted butter and flavored and flavored so you can get giving, giving your hands a yeah do you want me to done keep going? can you just keep going i knew <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew i had him here for a reason child labor at 27. <laughs> all right so i think we need about two teaspoons of um salt in there i like salt so i'm just gonna go go heavy pretty hard on it two and a half um, one and a half rather. I always end up adding more salt on yeah. top of the butter. And you can just taste it. So you're just going to mix now the salt through. Uh, yeah. I like to use uh, a, you know, obviously good salt, maybe Murray, uh, Murray River salt um, is a nice one to put in there. The little salt crystals make it um, a little bit fancy too. So I've still got my unsalted butter here. You don't want to work it too much because it'll start melting. All right, so it's really minimal handling is probably ideal. And you can get like butter pats and stuff, right? Yeah, butter pats, is that what they're called? They're butter like pats. Wooden, absolutely, wooden the old fashioned way where they used to, can you just um, have off uh, maybe three? We're gonna go three because I wanna do a sweet version as well. All right, so we're gonna make three different sorts. I think if you go to kitchen stores, you can find the, the little butter pats, they're pretty cute. 
Um, you can use a spoon to do this as well. I'm, my tip with butter pats, though, is that if you, if you make gnocchi a lot, oh, you, can oh, yeah. you can get two uh, you can get two gnocchi paddles in different sizes instead of being a. Oh, oh yeah. okay, you that's can, a great idea. You can use the back side of it. Yeah. And then you don't have to buy a butter pat. Yeah. You've got gnocchi boards. Yeah, that's great. That's really great. And so, Dewey, do you want to taste that for us? That'd be great. This is give, that. Just this give one. Him a spoon, spoon. <laughs> there you go. Just for salt. So this is the salted? This is the salted, yeah. Might be more. No, I don't want to. Is that right? Okay. Perfect. Well, I'm just going to move that across. All right, so today uh, we're going to show you how to do uh, just tarragon butter. Uh, I'm doing a beautiful steak later on for dinner, and I just want to put a little uh, round of tarragon butter on top of my steak. I'm just going to do plain old, you know, and garlic and parsley for like a garlic bread. And then uh, I'll leave the last one for you just to be thinking about. Okay? Yeah, this is perfect. We had a question come through about um, experimenting with flavour and seasonings at the bottom. Yeah. Go for it. So, yeah, yeah. have you experimented with any like flavourings and seasonings with your butter. Yes. And you're, you're starting off with tarragon. I'm, I'm actually quite curious. What what does work and what doesn't work? Yeah. What are the no no's? Um, well, I think something like tarragon, um, when it's in season, and if it's French tarragon, is amazing. As I said, you make it, and this is one that I prepared before. And I guess the other thing, just to say, you know, just I've, you know, deviating a bit, you know, that's a really gorgeous gift to give people as well. If you make your own butter, and you can just, you know, a little bit of bait, tie a couple of bits of string on the end of it, um, and you know, it, it it can be sliced in rounds, which is really lovely. And that's what I want to do with my steak is basically say uh, my tarragon butter. Mitch, do you mind just mix it? Oh, you clean now. Uh, I can use the spoon. Yep. I'm just going to add a little bit of that beautiful French tarragon and a little pinch of more salt just to level out. So is that fresh tarragon? Or is that it like is. Fresh? And it's just got that lovely aniseedy flavour. I've Where's just chopped it up quite it fine. And that comes from AMJ Produce who um, deliver, deliver to your door. Uh, which is amazing and it's really, really good um, quality, exceptional quality that lasts a long time. So that's great, Mitch. It's kind of harder than I expected to do. It's a lot easier with hands, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't want to get dirty. Yeah. <laughs> so. And neither do I, so yeah. there you go. I suggest um, if you're watching that you do get your hands dirty. <laughs> it's a lot quicker. We'll get, get your children to do it. We'll get your children to do it, yeah, exactly. So um, so tarragon really works well. Um, I think chili works really well as well. I've chili? never yeah. Yeah. I've never done one that I haven't liked. Can you just pop it on here for me to now? Some, to some extent. So I'm just really curious because like when you said so you I'm just trying to squeeze as much moisture out of it. Mm. Does that also mean that when you start adding seasonings to it, do you want to try to pick ingredients that are quite dry, that no. create a lot of moisture, or can you just? That's an interesting point. I haven't thought I about. I mean, I like, would say. You couldn't really do a zucchini butter, could you? No, I yeah. probably yeah. wouldn't do a zucchini butter. It probably wouldn't taste good, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think it'll taste great, but I, I think, you know, with something like this, I am just doing it for tonight. I know that I'm going to use this tonight, um, probably with the fresher ingredients, um, maybe it's not, you won't get the longevity, um, but I'm really happy, obviously, that I'm going to use this tonight, and, you know, I'm just going to go like that, so i just show you, yeah, so I've got, you know, just amazing, amazing smell there, and that's going to go on top of my steak. Nice big chunk on uh, on the steak, and it will just give it a perfect flavour. The other thing is, I would use that on chicken. If I'm cooking a chicken breast, I would just get a chicken breast. I'd cut the middle, and I would put one of these or inside. Stuff it into a roast chicken. Yeah, skin. or stuff it into the roast chicken skin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, tarragon is just so lovely, and that's all it is. It's really quite simple to do, right? And then the bake is important, uh, and I'm just going to roll like so. I'm glad you're doing this bit, and not me. And it's not my forte. You don't bring the gift wrapping. Not my forte. At all. <laughs> no, his gift wrapping I've been is known for, um, yeah, newspaper it's and it's, it's interesting. Let's <laughs> let's put it that way. Okay, so there it is. It's just you know a tiny little thing, but I've made that especially because of my steak. 
So I'm going to put that to the side. Um, as I said, this is the one that I prepared earlier and got my um, buttermilk from before. And it's really quite firm. I've obviously popped that into the fridge. Mitch, I'm just going to get some boiling water because I want to do, i like to show you how to cut that. Uh, and then the next one I want to do is um, just some parsley. So again, this is with the salted. I'm going to do my parsley. I'm just going to get a little bit of garlic. I mean, garlic and butter is just to How die for. How many cloves? Yeah. Oh, it's probably 10. <laughs> no, there's probably about two or three cloves in that. But this is for my... Um, More butter, in my opinion. This is for my bread that somebody made for me that I'm going to put in the oven. I've just got to get my hands dirty now because... <laughs> It just doesn't work otherwise. So I want to really clean the pan up. While you're doing this, we, we, we had another question come through about, oh, yeah. uh, that was asking about how long does this keep for? Uh, okay, so with the, um, with the herbs... More which, like how long does it take you to eat it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, with the herbs, um, I'm sort of thinking probably, you know, go around two weeks, I think, with the fresh herbs. And then um, if it's just straight butter, and you've got the buttermilk, all the buttermilk out, a couple of months, easy. Just pop it in the fridge and... Um, I've, I've had it fine. six months after yeah. we've used it, but we, we normally would, would cry back it, so we vacuum, vacuum seal it so there's no air, yeah. um, which probably makes a big difference. Okay, so... so if you can vacuum seal it, it will last a little bit longer. Yeah. You get rid of as much moisture as you can. It'll, it'll give you the longest, longer, yeah. But yeah. also, like, if you get really, really fresh cream, does that affect the shelf life? Um, it, it, it probably would, in, in, I'm sure, because... Yeah, well, the acidification if, process is what actually gives it its longevity as right. well. It's getting the buttermilk out and it's acidifying the cream. Yeah. And then, you know, I mean, if you, if you introduce acid to something, um, it does give it a longer, um, a longer shelf life. So, like, milk on its own isn't going to last anywhere near as long as cheese because we acidify the milk, right? And then, so, and then on top of that, if you, if you salt the butter, does that increase the shelf life? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 And then use your judgement. I mean, you'll taste it at the start of the process and know what it tastes like. Uh, if you taste it and it starts to taste bad for you, then chances are it's starting to go rancid. Yeah. And you'll know, you know if it's you not right. Yeah. Are, there, are there any visual signs that butter's not if you got any mould on it, yeah. I wouldn't be keen yeah. on using it. But apart from that, I don't, I don't think you can see any other no. signs of it. Exactly. All right, so here's my garlic uh, and um, parsley butter. I'm just going to cut the ends off so it doesn't look too much like a bonbon. It still looks like a bonbon. Bon -bon. But what, I would do, what I'm going to do with that is I actually want to put that in the fridge. I could, if, if I was actually going to just get my um, bread now, I could just slather that on and pop it in the oven. Uh, if I want to use it a little bit later, I'll put it in the fridge and then I'm just going to get my boiling water into oh, right. a jug. Here, Mitch, this jug here will work. And um, cut really, sorry I'm off camera, uh, really thin slices and put it into um, my bread. Yeah. Yes, please. And I'll get you to slice, just to slice the round. All right, so the last butter that I want to show you, sorry, I'm not, I am going to have to rinse my hands because I've had garlic on them. And it might not go with my next ingredient that well. I'm back. Okay, so the last ingredient uh, that I'm going to add to my, um, if I can open the jar, yeah. <laughs> I have to, <laughs> for Mitch to come back. Oh, good boy, Dewey. Thank you. The last um, component um, to add to this little bit of butter here, and it is salted. Uh, but it's okay. I mean, I could add it Salt to. Sweet, it's good. Yeah, I could add it to my unsalted. I want to make a little bit of honey butter. All right, so I'm just going to add that in there. Depending on what you want to do, you can add add less, more. Um, I usually start with around about a teaspoon. That's probably about a teaspoon, a generous teaspoon. But I'm Greek, and that's what we do. <laughs> and then I'm just going to mix that, just blend that through. It's going to be a little bit sticky, so I do suggest that you use perhaps just the back of a spoon. Just move that one out of the way so that we can... Alright, so there we go. So now I've got honey butter. How, how does that make you feel? 
Honey butter. Great. Love it. Put it Make on toast. Pancakes, pancakes with your buttermilk, any old pancake recipe. Can you make scones with make buttermilk? Make scones. I usually go to Margaret Fulton's um, beautiful uh, recipes for those sorts of things. Um, and wow, imagine having a pancake and putting honey butter on it. And I don't know, maybe banana? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Strawberry. banana. Yum. Banana and honey, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong, can you? Um, good question. Yes. When it comes to cooking with butter, does yeah. culture butter make any difference in the cooking process or is it more something that you serve? Um, I think it's a little bit, I would, I would liken that, I liken that to olive oil. You know, I mean, you have that beautiful olive oil that you put on your salad and you probably wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily cook with it. I think probably yeah. something like, um, cultured butter. Yeah, look, I mean, if, I mean, I've It'll got it on tap. Flavor. It definitely yeah. will give you more flavour. But my preference for cultured butter would be to, like I say, add it on top of the steak or, um, you know, put it on your, on your beautiful pancakes or put it with your bread. Somewhere where I can really distinguish um, the flavours rather than maybe getting lost in a whole bunch of other, you know, stronger flavours, if that makes sense. Almost being wasted. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think so. Yeah, exactly. It's not necessary. You're quite, you're right. Use you can. If you've got plenty of it, why not? Yeah, but, yeah. But you... I wouldn't buy it for for cooking, probably. Yeah, I'd be wanting to show off with my, you know, really good bread or on, on my beautiful pancake. Do you want to try a little bit of that honey butter? And let me know what you think. It's good having to be here. Not only does he do taste his tester. photography, he's our number one taste tester. Mm. Yum! It's good, isn't it? It's salty and sweet. So Sort of popcorn, mm. like it's sort of a popcorn kind of flavour, right? I'm gonna taste it. It is really delicious. The other thing that's really, really cute to do. And it's really, needs more honey. Needs more honey. Yeah. The other thing that's really oh cute, God. really it's cute got, yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah. It's because it's just the flavour. Is is make little balls and you know I like to put them in little balls and then put the honey over the top and just let them kind of nestle in there. Oh yeah, that's which is idea. really really quite yum. So anyone that's doing this at home, you'll find that when you taste it, like you can actually taste the salt grains. Yeah. So like give it a day, and, and all of that will, will dissolve. That's you right. You won't have any greenness in your body. But it's kind mm. of I think it's kind of nice to have that crunch. Mitch, can salt. you just pour a little bit of honey over the top of these? Yeah. So yeah, so you can do like a little honey ball and people can just take a little ball and put it on top of their, you know, depending on how big you want to make them. But they can just sort of sit in, in the honey like this, you know, you can make them smaller if you're just doing like a little scone or something and people just pick out a ball and, you know, pop it over the top or, which is really quite yummy, maybe even just quickly pour a whole bunch of it on top of there. Or you can just, again, do your um, little circle, your little roll. I'm not going to get much now from this. You can Where do you see, get this from? Because I think it's cool. What's that? The honey thing. The twiddler. Yeah. Yeah, I went to try and buy a twee one the other, uh, yesterday, oh, actually. <laughs> oh, you found it? Oh, my God, that's great. We found it last night. Oh, it just makes honey look fantastic. Yeah, it does. And so, yeah, so if I'm going to, uh, again, put that in the fridge, I'm going to make my little roll, like so, nice little neat roll. And if I was going to serve that with my pancakes, make sure you show it how uh, it cuts. Yeah, that's the, heart, um, the firm one. Probably don't need a knife that big. No, I wouldn't use that knife. <laughs> Actually, I'll use a very thin Red. Victorian ox. All right, so here we are. We've got our three different... Butters. There's another one here. Alright, so this is the fruit of our labour is tarragon butter going on my steak. I've got the um, garlic uh, and parsley. parsley butter and then I've got my honey butter to go um, with, my, with my sweets. Um, and then I just want to, to show you how easy it is to just get that slice. And as I said, if you are interested in um, cultures, just email me, chris at cheeserights.com.au and we will um, set up an online, we'll set up some cultures um, online for people to be able to buy. I would have liked you to have done that, but anyway. Oh, I think it's just cut. All right, so mm -hmm. you put the knife in boiling water. You know how much I am a fan of that. Okay. And you just get that lovely little slice. Uh, you can either take the paper off completely I think it makes it easy to just slide, you don't get your hands dirty. 
and you're just going, yeah, yeah, you're just going to slice. And that looks fantastic on a, a, you know, on a lovely plate. And if you've got some beautiful crusty bread, like we do. Yeah, can I eat some, please? Let me just get Good my, bread, huh? <laughs> let me just get my trusty are we gonna, plate. Are you going to cut dweez? Yep. So, let's move that aside. We're just going to cut a little bit of bread because... Because um, I'm hungry. Dewey made this fabulous loaf. Get a close up on your loaf. Please. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. It is amazing. And, no, okay, Mitch, off you go. How old is this Slice away. Uh, I think it's probably about almost two years old now. Sounds great. Alright, so, and I think we've gone for... I like the crust. Probably long enough. Yum. Beautiful. So, yeah. You want as well? That's right. This one just finish, finish the deal here. <laughs> a great big blob of butter. That's why I yeah. have to exercise so much because my mum feeds me <laughs> globs of butter. That can just be shared onto That's the probably, next yeah, piece as well. Yeah. All right. So it's just beautiful butter. That just tastes amazing. And look, I mean, if you're going to do butter, you just got to do it properly, don't you? And you've got to have good amounts of butter. And remember, butter makes everything better. There you go. All right, so butter, three or four ways, honey butter, chive, uh, parsley and garlic butter, and tarragon butter, um, and yum. And I'm eating. Thank you for watching, uh. and um, yeah, I hope that uh, you gained some knowledge from the Clever Little Cheese sessions. And gained um, some butter. And in case of mm. butter, probably a few handles as well. Uh, but anyway, it's great to be able to uh, just bring um, this to our, uh, to everyone while we're here in lockdown with COVID. And um, yeah, we look forward to being out on the other side anytime soon. So any questions, uh, email me, chris at cheeserights.com.au and I look forward to seeing you for the next Clever Little Cheese Sessions. Thanks. Bye.